Hi everybody, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor, and welcome to Lesson 4 of our Beginner's Corner Information Series on Selling Cash Secured Puts. In Lesson 3, we discussed two of the three prongs we use when analyzing which underlying securities we're going to utilize when selling cash secured puts. And those first two screens were fundamental and technical analysis. Here in Lesson 4, we're going to go over the third prong, which are common sense considerations that we must factor into our decision regarding which underlying securities to use. Now, of these considerations, the most important is to avoid earnings reports. And an earnings report represents a lot of risk because if the report is regarded as unfavorable when it comes out, the market could react and really hammer the price of that stock. And whatever cash was generated from the sale of the put option can dwarf in comparison to the amount of shared depreciation that's possible after a disappointing earnings report. So the rule of thumb is to never ever sell a put option when a company is reporting earnings prior to expiration of the put option contract. Now a great resource and a free website where you can access earnings report date information is earnings whispers.com. We also provide this information to Blue Collar Investor Premium members on the running list, as you could see on the screenshot right here. And the running list is on the middle of the screen towards the top. And those stocks that are highlighted in yellow rows are those that have passed all our screens, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and common sense principles, except the earnings report date is prior to expiration of the contract. So when they see this screen, they know they have to wait until the expiration date uh, and the contract date passes, and then they can enter the trade with these stocks. Another common sense consideration is to avoid stocks that report monthly as opposed to quarterly same-store retail sales statistics. I refer to these as banned stocks because they are never eligible for put selling. Some examples would be the Gap, Walgreens, Costco. There are about 10 right now. They used to be closer to 80, and most of those have opted out of reporting on a monthly basis. Now, a free site to get this file of those stocks that do report monthly is at our website, thebluecollarinvestor.com. Just look for the free resources link on the top black bar of the website pages and you just put in your email address and you'll have access to all the free files. The next common sense consideration is minimum trading volume. Never ever use a stock whether you're buying it or using it as the underlying security that has a trading volume under 250,000 shares per day. So uh, that's a liquidity issue where we can get favorable buy and sell prices and also Avoid stocks that are easily manipulated. As far as the options go, we always favor options that have a minimum open interest of 100, 100 contracts and or a bid-ask spread of $0.30 cents or less. Here's an options chain. The column to the far right highlighted in yellow shows the open interest. And the open interest is the number of open contracts. It's a cumulative statistic as opposed to volume, the column to the left of that, which is reset to zero each day. So I favor open interest in terms of viewing option liquidity. Once again, we want to see a minimum of 100 contracts of open interest and or a bid-ask spread of 30 cents or less in order to execute at favorable price points. The next common sense principle is uh, stock and industry diversification. We don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. So we want to have a minimum of five different stocks in five different industries. Therefore, no one security or group re will represent more than 20% of our total portfolios. On our premium reports, on our running list, we also give information regarding the name of the industry and the rank of the industry. And that helps our members make sure they are properly diversified. Now, another way to diversify is through the use of exchange traded funds, which are baskets of stocks. So that's another way to diversify. And we also uh, have an ETF, exchange traded 
fund report that we produce weekly for our premium members. Now, cash allocation is also important. Uh, not only do we want to make sure that we are diversified with stock and industry, but also the amount of cash that we allocate to each position. Let me give you an example. Let's say your portfolio consists of $50,000 in cash, and we want to have five stocks allocated in this portfolio. So what we do is we say to ourselves, okay, we're going we're gonna to set aside $10,000 per stock. Now, if a stock is priced at $10, as stock A is, that means that we could use 1,000 sh shares of underlying security, and that would, uh, would be 10 contracts. So we could sell 10 put contracts uh, with 1,000 shares of obligation. Now, uh, C is interesting because it's $30. We divide that into the 10,000, and it comes out to 333 well, we know that we that each contract represents 100 shares. So what we do is round it either up or down, uh, depending on which way it's closer, and that will dictate the number of shares of obligation. In this case, 333 is rounded down to 300, which means we're going to sell three put contracts for that particular security, and so on. And this way, we will allocate approximately the same amount of cash to each position. Now, here's an example of our premium report, the screening process, which does factor in some of this common sense information that we discussed, like you see here, the same, same store sales and average trading volume. So let's summarize these common sense principles that must be factored into our put selling decisions. In addition to fundamental and technical analysis, the screens we discussed in Lesson 3, we also must factor in these common sense principles. Earnings reports is the most important of these. We also factor in same store monthly sales stats. Once again, that file can be obtained for free on the free resources link of our website, thebluecollarinvestor.com. Minimum trading volume of 250,000 shares or more. And no stock or industry should represent more than 20% of our total portfolio. And, of course, we also want to allocate an equal amount of cash or close to it uh, in each of our positions. Okay, there we have it, common sense principles. Now, in Lesson 5, get ready to take off your shoes and socks because we're going to start doing our put-selling calculations. So thanks to everybody for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody.